Ladies and gents, welcome back. We're not one week into the inquiry into the use of the Emergencies Act back in February of 2022 by the federal government to squash protests, peaceful protests, I might add, at the nation's capital. Now, we're ha seeing many, many instances of contradictions in testimony as the testimonies come forward. And again, not one week into it. Now, two particular cases that I want to hit to hit on today are one case where fire trucks had difficulty getting to an incident at the Chateau Laurier. Now, that is what is purported to have happened. Also, an incident where there was uh, unsafe fuel storage taking place in a underground parking lot in, uh, in our nation's capital. Uh, yesterday, testimony kind of destroyed these claims. And this is uh, Steve Cal uh, Kanalakis saying that, no, this is actually not true. I just want to ask you a couple of questions about the impacts, uh, Mr. Kanalakis. Um, it was your view that uh, a lot of these different activities that were going on in downtown Ottawa were presenting <coughs> a serious danger and threat to the safety and security of the people of Ottawa, correct? Elements of it, yes. For sure. And we also know that it's substantially interfered with a lot of the public services um, uh, uh, garbage pickup, correct? Yes. Um, uh, the fire trucks had difficulty getting downtown? Yes. We heard about one incident with the Chateau Laurier that fire trucks couldn't get to them. You were aware of that event? That's actually not true. It wasn't true? No. Really? No, one fire truck couldn't get it, but there were fire trucks that got there from other routes. We have contingencies built in for all our emergency operations. So um, the, uh, the fire response actually did arrive. That particular truck that was witnessed couldn't get through. But we don't send fire trucks from just one location. We send it from multiple places. Well, I'm sure the general manager of the Chateau Laurier will find your evidence interesting, Mr. Ken Alakos. Now, what about uh, the gas? <laughs> so, right. We'll stop right there. First, he nailed on the uh, incidents of garbage uh, not being able to uh, be picked up. Well, this, this was kind of squashed by the, the fact that they were the cleanest protest to happen in Canadian history. Uh, these people picking up their own garbage and dealing with it, uh, as well as uh, clearing snow on the streets. It was very a very clean environment. But... Now, there's the contingency plan, as well as the protesters maintaining an open emergency lane. So there, there's claims that a fire truck couldn't make it through, uh, but it wasn't true that a fire truck couldn't make it to the Chateau, Chateau Laurier. Now he gets into another uh, point. Of course, we can see the frustration in the answer that he got. The frustration from the, the lawyer here as he twiddled his pen uh realizing how bad this uh this answer was uh, for his case here but um and he continues on this truck underneath the rito center that was a serious risk and danger correct um i can't make i i don't agree with that assessment it, it wasn't a risk or a threat to have it was a, a truck of fuel in an underground parking lot that wasn't you described it as a serious threat the truck was removed i don't i don't characterize it in that kind of um, uh, um urgency well, I, you, can, you can review the emails yourself, sir. I believe the Rideau Center did believe it, it was quite a risk and a threat. I can't speak um, for now, the Rideau Center. Uh, so I can't speak for the Rideau Center. Thanks to True North for grabbing this clip. But I wanted to put this out there because I'm a technician and I, I know a little bit about the fuel storage and things like this. This is part of my training as a technician. Uh, I keep hearing the danger of a truck in an underground parking lot uh, in Ottawa, in the Emergencies Act inquiry, these tanks' safety is regulated by the government. Uh, they are safe. There was no danger in having a truck with one of these tanks on the back of it. Now, what I'm referring to here is a slip tank that goes in the back of a pickup truck. And this was commonly used throughout the uh, Freedom Convoy to transport fuel. These the, the logistics of the Freedom Convoy was completely following regulation. Uh, these are truck drivers. These are mechanics. These are people in the industry. They know that they would get they would get nailed on this stuff if uh, a government regulatory body were to come out and nail them on uh, missing out on safety regulation. These guys are safety oriented. So having a slip tank in the back of a pickup truck is just as legal as having a fuel tank in the truck itself or in your car or what have you. Now, I put this out on Twitter 
And I got some interesting responses here. <laughs> some of these witnesses be like, I'm literally grasping at straws. Uh, but here we have uh, Joe Lyman saying, as someone who has designed slip tanks, yes, this is, <laughs> yes, there is a certification procedure and everything is regulated. So I replied, the claims in this testimony at the inquiry are unfounded. These fuel tanks are safe, period. Uh, this I believe to be true. And this is regardless of it, if it's a slip tank or even if they are uh, what are known as jerry cans, the, the small fuel uh, vessels that are meant for transportation of fuel. These are legal to have in the back of a, ve of a vehicle as long as they're sealed up correctly as they're intended. Uh, Joe Lyman then replying again saying, I can't help but feel like if the conversation is about fuel safety, or fuel tank safety, that the argument is already arguing beyond the scale or the the sale, uh, whether they were regulated or not, which they are. At no point would the liability be on those who purchased these tanks. So the liability, if there was a manufacturer defect, for example, that would be on the manufacturer. Um, this would not be on the people who used these tanks. And again, uh, the claims being that the tanks in the underground parking lot uh, were dangerous uh, for some reason. Now, uh, I believe this to pro likely be the claims of someone who is not familiar with the industry, with how uh, fuel is stored and transport transported uh, safely in Canada. And this is this is, again, regulated by the government. So it's it's just really interesting to see these arguments get shot down one after another, claims being made, and again, being shot down one after another in testimony during these this inquiry into the use of the Emergencies Act. I'm still not sure what this has to do with justifying the Emergencies Act, but <laughs> nonetheless, these are claims that are being made and brought forward as evidence. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think on this. Of course, the Emergencies Act is there has to be justified by uh, saying that it was an urgent, temporary, and national in scope emergency that the federal government needed to have extrajudicial powers, powers beyond what uh, is available by police police forces or uh, federal police forces, the RCMP. They, they would have to prove that this was all stuff beyond that. If it was uh, uh, an infraction when it came to moving fuel, uh, that we have laws on the books for that. So I, again, I don't understand why they're bringing these arguments to the table. They're definitely not justifying the use of the Emergencies Act. <laughs> anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you have not already. If today is the day that you've seen so many of my videos and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing today. Hit that notification bell. It lets you know when I go live and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.